Welcome back to Pyro Innovations, where we talk everything fireworks. I'm going to start today's video off by mentioning a few names that you've probably all heard of before. Fireworks, C4, Dynamite, Anfo, there's many others, but which of those names does not belong in the same category? That's right, fireworks. Now I know what you're probably thinking, but Mike, Fireworks used at professional displays are huge. How are they not in the same category? You mean like this 16 inch fireworks shell, which weighs over 50 pounds and is shot out of a mortar like a cannonball to 1600 feet in the air and releases a tremendous amount of energy when it functions? That is the question we will answer in today's video. But before we get to that, here are some fun facts about an explosive that is practically a household name, dynamite. Dynamite, patented by Swedish physicist Alfred Nobel in 1867, was based on nitroglycerin. Nitroglycerin by itself is very unstable and resulted in a number of accidents. So many accidents that the California legislature banned the transportation of nitroglycerin, forcing the workers who were using it to blast tunnels for the transcontinental line to only use black powder, which is a far inferior explosive and we'll learn why a little later in the video. What Nobel did was added diatomaceous earth, which is a sedimentary rock made of microscopic aquatic plants. Adding this to the nitroglycerin stabilized it, making it much safer to use. Now this has evolved over the years, but the concept of stabilized nitroglycerin still lives on in the dynamite produced today. Fun fact about nitroglycerin is that it is also a medication used to treat a number of heart and blood vessel related diseases. So let's get back to the question we asked at the beginning of the video. So for the purposes of this discussion, there are two main types of explosives, low explosives and high explosives. Low explosives undergo a process known as deflagration, where rate of reaction is subsonic meaning slower than the speed of sound, and is driven by the transfer of heat from one layer of the composition to the next. You can increase the overall combustion speed of a low explosive by increasing the reactive surface area, so the amount of surface area that is actually combusting. So for example, instead of using a singular surface in which the combustion takes place in our previous example, Let's instead imagine uh, granules of this pyrotechnic composition that not only by themselves increase uh, the available surface area that's simultaneously able to combust, but also allows the heat and flame to travel between those granules to allow a more simultaneous ignition throughout the pyrotechnic device. This will certainly increase the speed in which that pyrotechnic composition will be consumed. But keep in mind that the rate of reaction of one of those individual particles of pyrotechnic composition is still dependent on how fast it can transfer heat from one layer of itself to another. Low explosives typically require confinement in order to function as an explosive. A great example is the burst charge inside of a firework shell. By itself, it will only burn rapidly and not explode. It is only when that burst charge is confined inside of a firework shell that it rapidly increases the pressure and causes the casing to fail violently, releasing all of that energy at once in the form of an explosion. Low explosives use different chemicals, usually have a fuel, an oxidizer, a binder, all intimately mixed together into a homogeneous composition. Now even though these fuels and oxidizers are intimately mixed, they are still technically separate molecules just closely spaced together. This is in contrast to a high explosive, which are typically a single chain molecule that has the fuel and the oxidizer in one. This is a great transition into what a high explosive is. Now high explosive does not need a container or confinement in order to explode. High explosives undergo a process known as detonation. They also cannot be set off in the same way as a low explosive. A low explosive typically requires a simple application of heat from a flame or a burning fuse in order to be initiated. This is not the case with high explosives as they require a supersonic, meaning faster than the speed of sound, 
shock wave or detonation wave in order to initiate the decomposition of that single chain molecule. Because of this, high explosives are typically much safer to handle than low explosives since they require that supersonic shock wave in order to initiate them and in most cases cannot be set off with the simple application of a flame or burning fuse. So in contrast to a low explosive whose rate of reaction was dependent on how fast it could transfer heat from one layer of itself to the next, the rate of reaction of a high explosive is now dependent on only how fast it can transfer that supersonic detonation wave through the material. And because of those two different mechanisms that determine the rate of reaction for a low explosive or a high explosive, the high explosive releases all of its energy in a much shorter period of time, which is what allows it to explode without confinement. So to help everyone understand the two different mechanisms that determine rate of reaction for a low explosive versus a high explosive, Let's pretend this is an aluminum bar that I'm holding in my left hand. I take a blowtorch and I apply the flame at the other end of that bar. It's going to take time for the heat to transfer through before I feel warmth in my hand. Now in contrast, imagine I took that same metal bar and I held it up to my ear and then I hit the end of that metal bar with another metal bar. The sound is going to travel through that metal bar to my ear at the speed of sound and is not dependent at all on how fast it can transfer heat. So that should give you a better understanding of how significant the difference is in the rate of reaction between a low explosive and a high explosive. Different types of high explosives are used for different applications. They have different detonation velocities, uh, differing amount of gas production. So for example, ANFO, ammonium nitrate fuel oil, is very popular for moving large quantities of earth because it produces a tremendous amount of gas in a very short period of time, which makes it great for pushing. In contrast, something like dynamite has a much higher or much faster detonation velocity. Therefore, it's used to fracture. So if you're gonna be uh, mining through very dense rock material, we're finally able to answer the question we asked at the beginning of the video. Are fireworks actually explosives? The answer is yes. They fall into the category of low explosives. If fireworks weren't low explosives and instead fell in the high explosive category with the others that we mentioned today, all you would get is a big boom because they would consume themselves so rapidly that you would never get to experience the beautiful colors and effects that a firework is meant to produce. I hope this video was educational for everyone, and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, and definitely remember to like and subscribe. Check out our other videos, especially the ones on how fireworks work. We take you through a great example with an inert shell showing you the insides of a firework and how they function, as well as being able to tell the difference between consumer and professional fireworks, and can we shoot fireworks in bad weather? Until next time, this is Mike from Pyro Innovations. Be safe, and I'll see you on the next one.